Om Tat Sat. Welcome to Gyan Bhakti. We are currently exploring the scripture Mysticism of Srimad Bhagavatam. Commentaries by my worshipful Guruji, Swami Jyotirmayananji Maharaj, narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilanand. So in today's satsang, we will be starting the exciting story of Lord Krishna's birth. Very auspicious and very deep. So let's get started. In ancient India, in an atmosphere of great pomp and splendor, Devaki, the king the niece of the king of Mathura was married to Vasudeva, a nobleman in the kingdom. At the conclusion of the wedding ceremony, Kamsa, a terrible demon, embodied as the prince of Mathura, offered to drive the wedding chariot out of courtesy to his cousin Devaki. So he was a very cruel um, king. King uh, Kamsa, he was actually the crown prince and then he imprisoned his own father uh, and he became the king. But he was more of a demoniac a quality king. No sooner had the gala procession begun when a celestial voice was heard saying, O Kamsa, the eighth child of Devaki will bring about your destruction. The moment Kamsa Kams heard this, he took out his sword ready to kill Devaki. Vasudev stopped him from doing so, pleading, Do not kill this helpless woman. It is her children that you fear. Spare her and I will deliver to you all of her children to deal with as you wish. Kans agreed to spare Devaki's life but remained cautious about the danger of the prediction. Time passed and Devaki gave birth to her first son. In accordance with his promise, Vasudev brought the infant to Kans. Kans was pleased and since he felt no threat from the first child, he sent the baby home. However, fear soon began to color his demoniac mind and Kans killed the child. He then ordered that Devaki and Vasudev be chained and imprisoned and instructed his guards to keep a constant watch over them. Thus, in his gloomy prison, five more children were born, one after the other, and Kans killed them all mercilessly. Devaki's seventh child, Balram, was the incarnation of Sheshnag, an aspect of Lord Vishnu. According to the Puranic concept, Sheshnag is the cosmic serpent that holds the whole universe on its countless hoods, a figurative portrayal of the cosmic mind. To prevent Balrama's death at the hands of Kans, Lord Vishnu commanded Maya Shakti, his power of cosmic illusion, to secretly remove the child from Devaki's womb. She was then to place him in the womb of Rohini. Vasudeva's second wife, who was living in the village of Gokul with Nanda, a close friend of Vasudev and his wife Yashoda. This is where Lord Krishna was brought up as a baby. He further instructed the Devi to be born herself in the womb of Yashoda. So this was the, the plan of the divine energies, how to, how to bring about Lord Krishna. Following these instructions, Devi ascended to, sorry, descended to uh, Mother Earth and carried out the transfer of Balarama from Devaki to Rohini. So this was the Divine Mother, the Devi Shakti, who made this possible for God. When this was accomplished, the people in Mathura all concluded that Devaki had lost her child due to a miscarriage. Then the birth of the eighth child, Krishna, drew near and Kamsa was very scared because he had heard of that prediction that it would be the eighth child that would kill him. At the time of Kamsa's, uh, Krishna's advent coming, the entire atmosphere became auspicious charged with holy vibrations and delight. Everywhere on the earth there was a sense of rejoicing. The stars shone with gentle light and the sky in all directions was blue and clear. All planetary conditions became congenial. Of course, 
Mother Nature was welcoming God, Lord Krishna, in the form of an avatara, a fragrant breeze began to blow. The earth began to reveal its hidden treasures of precious stones and metals. Rivers began to flow with pure, clean water. And even during the night, the lotuses began to unfold their petals as if to welcome God. The trees, even out of season, became laden with fruits. Birds of all types began to sing from the branches. In the sacrificial altars, fires began to blaze with Without any effort, bringing great joy to the saintly persons. Through the atmosphere, although it was congenial, the sky became laden with clouds where Krishna was born. It was midnight and suddenly the dark room was lit up with a celestial light of the divine incarnation. The child assumed the shining effulgent form of Vishnu with four arms holding in his hands a kanch, mace, discus and lotus which is the four arms of Lord Vishnu that is generally depicted. On his chest was the footprint of sage Bhrigu which is supposed to be the mark of all the major incarnations of Lord Vishnu. He was decked with yellow apparel and on his neck there was a garland of special jewels. His blue complexioned body was like a dark swarthy cloud. Seeing this divine form, Vasudeva realized that the Lord himself had come in the form of his son. His eyes sparkled with joy and revealed the thrill of mystic delight that he was experiencing. Devaki had clear insight into the fact that her son was the divine incarnation, God himself. Now seeing Krishna in the divine form, she prayed, O Lord, I am afraid of Kans. Let not Kans know that you have incarnated. Withdraw your divine form and perform your human sport. O Devi, Lord Krishna said, Remember that in your past incarnation, you and your husband Vasudev had practiced intense austerity. When I, as Lord Vishnu, presented myself before you, you had asked, May I have a son like you, O Lord, and I have granted that boon. Since there is no one like me, I have myself become your son. I have shown this form to you so that you might remember your past incarnation and understand how you, by your devotion, have been blessed. Thus saying, Lord Krishna became silent, withdrew his divine form, and assumed the form of an ordinary infant. How was the divine child to be kept away from Kans? Suddenly, Vasudeva found his chain fetters loosened. Then, influenced by the mysterious divine hand, he felt inspired to place Krishna in a basket and walked out of the prison. But how could he do such a thing when the prison was so heavily guarded and fortified with locks? Miraculously, all the demon guards that were there awaiting the news of the eighth child fell into deep slumber and every prison gate which normally had been fortified with great dead bolts and chains flew open the moment Vasudeva approached with the baby on his head. He had God. The little baby looked like a simple harmless little infant was God. And when God comes, he is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. Miracles and amazing things can happen. All we have to do is have that faith, that indomitable faith and trust. So during that time, rain started to fall to conceal the sights and sounds of Vasudeva's movements. However, great Sheshnag, the cosmic a uh, mystic serpent that holds the universe on his many hoods followed secretly behind Vasudeva, spreading those hoods like an umbrella above Vasudeva's head, protecting father and child from the rain. Carrying the child in the basket, Vasudeva went on in that dark, dense darkness, not knowing where he was going, but led at every moment by the divine hand. 
Soon he reached the banks of the Yamuna River and found it high in floods, with the swift current producing terrible whirlpools. However, the moment Vasudeva entered the water, the river lowered itself and afforded passage. So we will continue this journey in tomorrow's satsang. This is Swami Nikhilanand, Om Tatsat.